Right, well, we've sort of touched a bit on, on um, developing questionnaires and, and the sort of thinking and thought we have to put into it. So what we're going to do this afternoon is I'm going to run through some of the principles of questionnaire design. Um, and I think we're all sort of sold to this idea that questionnaires are simple and they're really not. They can be far more complex than people actually think they, they are. So we're going to go through some of the um, underpinning theory and the principles of it. So thinking about what a questionnaire is, um, it can be self-administered, online, postal, um, it can be a telephone or a face-to-face face -face interview with a pre-designed schedule. Um, it can be a simple checklist. Um, it can be a simple rating scale. Um, it can be any of those things, or all of them, um, <clears throat> on, one, on one document or across many. But basically, um, it's an important research tool although some official forms are questionnaires, a questionnaire is not necessarily an official form. Um, and I was reviewing somebody's questionnaire the other day, um, and her first statement was, please tell me a bit about yourself, and it was, you know, gender, age, or this sort of thing. And then in brackets, these questions are not mandatory. Well, actually, darling, none of your questions are mandatory because the people filling in your questionnaire are volunteers. You know, you can't do anything to them if they refuse to answer your questions, so you might want to rethink. Um, <clears throat> so it's not an official form, um, no matter how you might want to hope it is. But equally, it's not a set of questions that are um, casually jotted down um, in the coffee bar or the pub. There has to be a real reason for everything you ask. And I think, the, I think the, the, the thing to bear in mind is if a question isn't going to inform your inquiry, why would you ask it? Um, it's not a methodology. It's a method. There is a difference. Um, it's a data collection tool. It's, it's a way of getting information from your participants. Um, it is an important research tool. Um, and very often, its function is measurement. And there is a re it's a real funny area. Um, because I would, I would always assume, presumably because that is my prejudice, that a questionnaire is a quantitative data research tool because I'm going to put some numbers on it somehow. But equally, there are people who go, no, of course it's not a quantitative research tool. It's a qualitative method. Um, so I guess to a certain extent, it depends what you're asking and how much free text you're allowing. Um, but generally, its function is to produce some sort of numerical data. Um, there you go, quantitative data. Um, so the pros and cons of questionnaires <coughs> On the positive side, I've put it gives unambiguous, quantifiable information. I'm hesitating a bit about the word unambiguous, because if there is a way to confuse yourself with questionnaires, your research respondents will do it. Um, so the example would be the, what the questionnaire that I did with, uh, with my colleagues, um, asking them how far away, from, one of the questions was how far away from the university do you live? And some people said 20 miles, some people said 15 kilometres, and one person said 20 minutes. Um, it hadn't occurred to me that, that, but that's how far away she lives, she lives 20 minutes away. Um, so it wasn't unambiguous information because it wasn't as unambiguous question as I hoped it would be. It has low processing costs, um, particularly with online stuff now because it just automatically populates a database for you. Um, but even if you're paying somebody to do your data entry, it, it's certainly minimum wage activity, I suspect, because it, it's mind-numbingly tedious after the first 200 questionnaires. Um, but I do have to say, if you can do your own data entry, it's definitely, definitely worth it because you just know the data inside out at that point. Um, it can reach respondents who are geographically dis dispersed, especially if the questionnaire is online. Um, <clears throat> and it, I think 
as, as a research community, it behoves us to think wider than just our own geographical boundaries. So I, had, um, I was working with a PhD student who was interested in symphysis pubis dysfunction, which is a side effect of pregnancy, which is really, really horrible, and I won't describe it because every woman in the room will want to cross her legs. Um, and she, was, she wanted to get the stories of women who'd had this very unpleasant side effect of pregnancy. And she said, well, I work in a women's hospital, so I can ask, I can ask them. But, I said, but if you're doing your data collection online, you can ask the world. And so she did. And she got 50 stories from Australia, America, South Africa, Italy. She would never have got that if she'd have just done her paper questionnaire and handed it out in the outpatients department. It just gave such rich data. Um, and again, that was the use of a, a sort of a questionnaire that gave us qualitative research, although we only had one question, and it was, tell us what it was like. Um, it can avoid, in, it, it avoids interview bias, maybe. Um, <clears throat> the implication of interview bias is if you're creating a face-to-face -face relationship with somebody while you interview them, there is always a danger they will tell you what you want to hear, particularly if what you're interviewing them about is a, is, um, a contentious or a, a difficult topic. Um, but then, as I say, um, I've sent out my questionnaire, and even though it had just come out saying, can you you feel this anonymously, I was still getting people apologising for not liking John Barrowman. So there was a little bit of interview bias there. Um, but if you're talking about a, a, an unfamiliar group, people who don't actually know you, then you, you, you do avoid that. On the negative side of things, <coughs> um, it forces people to make a choice. And some of that is down to how carefully you craft your questionnaire. But then if you look at some questionnaires that you are supplied, um, the question would be, why are you forcing me to make these answers. So I, for example, I support the Cats Protection League. Um, I give them some money every month because I like cats. And they sent me a questionnaire and one of the things was, um, what, what would you want to do? Would you want to um, give more money and get a fluffy toy? Give the same amount of money but get more newsletters? Or, what was the other one? Give less money and get less newsletters. Well, I didn't want to do any of those things. I wanted to give the same amount of money and not get newsletters because they're wasting my £10 a month sending this rubbish out to me. Um, sometimes there's difficulty with respondent understanding. So it can be quite difficult if you're not there to explain what you mean um, and you're just depending on the context that people are putting on your questions. Questionnaires are pretty no, well known for a poor response rate and although the theory and the literature varies, a general rule of thumb is anything less than 75% is seen as a poor response rate. I would, I would dance from now till Christmas if I got a response rate even approximating 75%. Um, it's very difficult to get people to return questionnaires. Um, Issues with literacy and language problems. <coughs> um, you can't always assume that everybody has as high a level of literacy as the person designing the questionnaire. Um, language problems doesn't even isn't just restricted to not having English as the first language. It, you know, the UK is very rich in individual dialects and ways of speaking. Um, and if it's a different way of speaking, then it makes no sense to people at all. <coughs>